and Patriots and was the first pick of the Panthers in the expansion draft. He's still here in Charlotte. Defensive back Rod Smith. Rod, good to see you. Bill, good to see you as well. Uh, take me back to that 95 season when you were let out there for the taking by these uh, expansion teams, Jacksonville and Carolina. Uh, did you expect to be taken by one of these two teams? Had the Panthers called you about an uh, interest? You know, it was uh, a kind of a bizarre scenario. I was uh, uh, I played up in New England with uh, Bill Parcells for a couple of years and, and started about 85% of the games under Bill. Um, and uh, he called me up while I was visiting a friend um, in, uh, in Los Angeles and said that, hey, look, we're going to have to either sign you to X amount of dollars or I'm going to point you to the expansion draft. And I said, well, yeah. You know, can I think about this? And my, actually, my first response was, you know, I'll take it. I didn't want to leave. I mean, we, we had just gone from a 2-14 and 14 team to a playoff team under Bill Parcells, and I certainly didn't want to leave him. Um, and also had some charity things going with Big Brothers of Boston at the time, and I really had kind of cemented myself in that, uh, in, in that Boston area, and I didn't want to go. But after talking with my father and my agent, they said, hey, the, your best bet is to go in the expansion draft. We think you're going to get picked very high. I didn't see that happening. Um, visited Carolina. They didn't really seem interested. I uh, visited Jacksonville, they didn't really seem interested, and then all of a sudden I was the number one pick in the draft. All right, I, I want to talk about your early years with New England uh, and playing up there for Bill Parcells, but let's talk about a college national championship that you won at Notre Dame. Uh, tell us about that season because there was a, uh, a guy named Fox who was on the other side of the ball in that championship <laughs> game too, West Virginia, right? Yeah, we, we beat, the, beat the tail out of, uh, <laughs> off of Mike Fox in, uh, in West Virginia, but... You know, that, that team, um, uh, Bill, it was, uh, it was a rare group of, um, of, of very physical, um, very aggressive, very determined football players. Um, uh, Coach Holtz did a great job uh, of making adjustments during the game, but I, 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 I can tell you this with all honesty, it was the, the, most, the most physical group of football players, the most physical group of men that I've ever been associated with. Practices were absolutely brutal. Um, and I remember calling my father saying, Dad, I, I, you know, I don't know if I can play this game. I mean, we're in these, these contact drills that are so fierce and that are so intense. And the first thought people have is well, some kind of brutal deal was going on. It wasn't that. It was just so hyper-competitive in practice. And there were so many guys who liked playing a physical style of game that, you know, we played Michigan at Michigan, who was the number, one, number two team in the country that year, and ran the ball. 58 times in the game, we threw it once in the first half and twice in the second half to beat Michigan at their place. I mean, that's, that's the kind of team that we had. Uh, uh, won the championship game against Mike Fox in, in West Virginia, running three defenses. You know, it, it became not about, not about scheme, it became about getting after your guy and physically wearing him out, and, th and that's kind of what we did. Now, I've interviewed Steve Berline, who does a great Lou Holtz impression. <laughs> I've heard you can do a Lou Holtz impression. <laughs> You have any good, good Lou Holtz uh, stories that you can? Uh... Well, um, I, I'll tell you this. You know, uh, uh, Lou Holtz and I had a, uh, uh, had, had a tough relationship at the beginning when I, when I first got there. I, I had, um, had enrolled in some, uh, some pre-med classes, and, um, you know, they were backing me up to football practice. So I was having to leave practice every, every day early. It finally pulled me over after about six or seven days of this. I was like, hey, listen, you need to take this class this summer. And I said, well, I've got to take it now, otherwise I'm going to have to, I won't be, it won't be offered again until my junior year. And he said, okay, you take that class and you better be on the practice field earlier. So now he had me, you know, had my schedule jammed up and everything. And I can imagine now as an adult looking back on it, seeing Coach Holtz looking at this snotty-nosed 17-year-old kid telling him, listen, I'm not changing my, my class schedule for you or Notre Dame or anybody else, buddy. How, how bizarre that must have <laughs> how looked to him. But, but he told me my, my senior year, getting ready to play Florida in the Sugar Bowl, um, uh, I dropped a pass or something, and, and he walked by me and he said, hey, listen. He said, hey, Smith, let me tell you something. I never voted for you for captain. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea why I'm playing your tail in this game, but I just hope you don't embarrass yourself. <laughs> and, and, I, and, I, and I'm thinking to myself, heck, I'm the captain of the damn defense. I mean, is that something you want to share? Yeah. So yeah, that's, uh, that's my little old sermon. To the, to, the, to the last day I got ready to leave that university and played my last game, he was still busting my chops. <laughs> wow, what a great story. All right, so uh, you're up in Boston playing for the Patriots. Uh, Bill Parcells. Uh, talk about 
being a rookie defensive back in the National Football League and facing a guy like Dan Marino? It's, uh, it's funny you mention that because that was the, um, Dan Marino was the defining point for me to know that, that I, I was playing football on a different level. You just don't see, and for my, for my money, the difference to, um, in the NFL versus the top level college. And you played Notre Dame back in those days. We played for the title virtually every other year. Um, so I saw Rocket Ishmael and Tim Brown and all these great players in practice every day. Uh, I, first I got to New England, the team was awful. We went 2-14 and 14 that first year. Michael Irving was, uh, not Michael Irving, but uh, Irving Fryer was special. Andre Tippett was special. Everybody else, I thought, you guys probably couldn't start for Notre Dame last year. You know, I don't, no wonder we're 2-14. and 14. But when we got in the football field against Dan Marino, I was running across the field covering Mark Clayton, who at that time was at the end of his career. So I had a little speed edge on him. And I've got my arm right up against Mark Clayton. And that typically means you're covered. I don't know how much closer you can get than putting your arm on a guy's chest. And uh, I looked at Dan Marino when he's looking down the field. And then I turned my head to look back at Clayton just to make sure I had pressure on him. And the ball went poop, just like that. And the whole time, Clayton was running across the field just Mm -hmm. because he knew as soon as I turned my head, he was going to catch a pass. He didn't have to run hard. So even though he was probably 33 years old and slow and bad back, he knew, hey, rookie, as soon as you turn your head, I'm going to beat you for first down so it doesn't make any difference. Tell me what Bill Parcells is like as a head coach. Um, I think Bill Parcells, if, if, you have a, um, if, if you have a certain amount of mental toughness, I think he can be a, a, a real spark for anyone's career. Obviously, he's been incredibly successful as a coach. Um, people don't give him credit for his being as intelligent as he is. He is a fantastic, conceptual thinker. Um, he sees all the moving parts and he talks to players in a very, and what makes him genius is that he can communicate very complex, conceptual ideas to a player in one or two things. And what I mean, what I mean by that is, for example, he called me into his meeting. Every, meeting, every, uh, every uh, Monday morning, he'd call me in, hey Rod, get in here at six o'clock, I wanna talk to you for 15 minutes. I'd come in, he'd say to me, hey Rod, We've got uh, Brett Favre and, and Sterling Sharp coming up this week. If you don't get beat on the curl route and you don't give up a touchdown on a double move, we're going to win the football game. <laughs> Just do that. Don't get me beat on a touchdown all right, and cover the curl and we'll win the game. And I leave, and my roommate, who's a starting safety, comes in, and he tells Dion, hey, listen, Dion, every time this guard pulls, I need you to be right in front of that guard, and every time they run this reverse, I need you to be outside of this thing. If you do that, we'll win the game. And he would literally go down the line and tell every single player just one or two things which would make them successful. And you think about that conceptually in a game, and that's why his teams are so successful. It's not a complex scheme. But every player is keying on certain things for that person's character, that, per that person's position, and what their role is. Um, and he treats you fair. Everybody sees Bill Parcells screaming. I got some of that against the Buffalo Bills on national television. Got beat for a touchdown by Andre Reid. Bill Parcells is close to my face, screaming at me. My mom called me up after the game. You know, who is that guy? I'm, I'm flying to Boston. No, don't do that. You'll get me fired. But, uh, but everybody sees him screaming and yelling. But what they don't see is after the game, when you have performed those, those certain techniques that he asked you too well, and he puts his arm around you and gives you a, a big hug and a, a peck on the forehead and says, hey, you played great. I think you have a chance to, to be in this league for a while. If you continue to, to show the progress that you're making and, and really lift guys up. So he's, he, there's a balance there. We're, we're about out of time, but I want you to let, uh, let the fans know what you're doing now business-wise. Uh, business-wise, I'm working at 84 Lumber. Um, I've got a couple guys working underneath me, and, and we sell contracting materials to, uh, to builders and, and, and land developers. Um, uh, a little too big of an operation to, to deal with individuals, but, but smaller contractors that build five to 20 homes a year is kind of right in, our, right in our wheelhouse. And we help those guys with their takeoffs and engineering and, and, and help them build a little cheaper and a little faster. Rod Smith, great seeing you, Rod. Uh, congratulations on a great career. That was a good Holtz imitation. That's, uh, <laughs> that, that's some pretty good stuff and continued success. Thank you, Bill. Good to see you as well. All right, Rod Smith, our guest, and uh, we're out of time, folks. That's another edition of Sports Night at South End Brewery. We'll see you again next time. Sports Night at South End Brewery is brought to you by South End Brewery and Smokehouse, offering fine cuisine, custom crafted beers, and the number one microbrewery in the South. And by Imbo Furniture, Scandinavian and contemporary design. Fox Tops All, the countertop specialist. Call now and ask about our starting line selections. Hendrick Lexus. Come see Ronaldo Turnbull and get the keys to your luxurious new Lexus today. Charlotte Health and Fitness Magazine. Ansel Brown.
Hi, I'm Ronaldo Turnbull. Commitment to excellence has been the cornerstone for all my professional endeavors. Here at Hendrick Lexus, I pride myself on providing my guests with exceptional service. I will educate you about our Lexus lineup and provide you with an outstanding experience. Hendrick Lexus offers one of the largest selections of new and certified pre-owned Lexus vehicles in the South. Our service team is one of the most well-respected groups in the Lexus network. So come on by as my guest and let me show you what makes Hendrick Lexus so special. Thinking of updating your existing countertops? Then call the countertop specialists at Fox Tops All. Fox Tops All is a leading provider of premium custom manufactured countertops, which we fabricate to your specs. No matter how large the project, Fox Tops All believes in exemplary customer service from the moment you walk through our doors until the last installed surface meets your satisfaction. Come visit our Mooresville showroom today and see for yourself why Fox Tops All. Welcome to Stressless, the recliner that lets you create your own personal comfort zone with a smooth reclining glide system that eases your body into the perfect position for total relaxation, plus full lumbar support and a headrest that adjusts automatically. Stressless, relax your body, free your mind. Come, experience Stressless at Enbow Furniture in Cornelius. You don't have to be this fit to read Charlotte Health and Fitness Magazine, but let Charlotte Health and Fitness Magazine help you maximize your active lifestyle. Every month, CHF readers enjoy features on the best places to get fit, look great, and have fun. CHF is now available for home or office delivery. For a limited time, visit chfmag.com and sign up to receive your complimentary copy today.